Hey, I'm Holly Andrews. Welcome back to the channel. It is almost spring break time and I, for one, love to travel. So if you are hitting the road for spring break, I want to give you my top tips to help you stay healthy while still having an amazing time on vacation. If you're like me, there is nothing worse than coming back from a vacation and then three or four days later, boom, right? You get hit by some illness and it takes you out. So I have some tips that I use and I wanna pass on to you to help me and the family stay healthy when we travel. Can't always guarantee it, but these are gonna significantly increase your chances of a healthy immune system while you're on the road and not getting that sickness when you get back from your vacation. So first up, let's talk about hydration. We all know that staying hydrated is very important in our everyday lives. There are lots of reasons for this, right? It helps our, all of our organs function. It helps our brain function. Everything revolves around water in our bodies, and so we need to stay hydrated. This is especially true even more so when you are traveling. And if you're traveling by air, that just takes the importance of staying hydrated up a notch because for every hour that you are in the air, your body is losing eight ounces of fluid. And those little water bottles that you get, maybe one or two when you're flying from the airline, do not cut it to replace that water that you're losing. So here are my tips to help you stay hydrated and comfortable while you're flying, especially, you know, in the air. So. I do not leave home without my refillable water bottle. I take this everywhere when I'm traveling. This is a really good size. It's about 24 ounces. You can see it is well loved, um, but it fits nicely in like the side pocket of my backpack or whatever bag that I have. I usually carry a 40 ounce water bottle around with me when I'm home. That's just a little bit too big and bulky when I'm traveling, especially if I'm flying. So I carry a refillable water bottle with me everywhere. Most airports these days have water bottle refillers in them. You can find them and get free water um, to fill this up. And then in addition, I always buy a liter water bottle uh, at the airport to take on the plane with me. So going through security, make sure your water bottle is empty, but then find one of those refillable bottle stations um, in the airport and fill her up. That way you have plenty of liquid to take with you on the flight and you can continue to drink during your flight, especially a long one. The other tip that I love to give is make sure that you have some electrolyte packets. I particularly like these Element ones. I carry these with me and because these are powder, I can take these in my carry-on. If you want some other options, you could get some like of the Mio drops or other like electrolyte drops that you can add to your water, but they would have to go in your little baggie of liquids if you want to carry them on the airplane. Otherwise, you can stash them in your checked luggage if you're flying. If you're driving, obviously, that's not an issue. What might be an issue for you while you're driving is bathroom breaks. I drink a ton of water. I try to drink a gallon a day. So when we're driving, we build in bathroom stops every hour and a half. So you might not also feel, find one of those refillable water stations at, you know, you're not gonna find those, especially in the US when you're traveling around. So you probably either want to pack your own water bottles or you know, you're just gonna have to buy some at a gas station when you're on the road. But either way, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. We tend to not drink enough water when we're traveling because either we don't wanna stop at the bathroom or you know we're flying and we don't want to have to get up but it's super critical that we stay hydrated but let's back up before we even begin our flight or our trip we want to make sure that we are already hydrated well hydrated again especially true if you're flying you don't want to go into a situation that is going to really dehydrate you if you're already dehydrated so make sure that you're getting enough water and electrolytes before you even start your trip another tip that i have especially if you're flying is to avoid the alcohol because that's going to dehydrate you. I know it can be kind of a bonus if you're flying internationally and you want alcohol on your flight, but just take that into consideration that it will dehydrate you even further. Also, um, you know, I might skip the caffeine, especially at the beginning of the flight. Save that for if you're flying overnight internationally. 
save that for that breakfast wake up call um, before you land. So those are my tips to help you stay hydrated while you're traveling, either by plane or by car. Make sure that you are getting enough water. It's gonna help keep your body healthy, your body functions doing what they're supposed to do and help your immune system stay boosted. Next up, let's talk sleep. Sleep is your best friend, really, when it comes to your overall health, but especially when you're traveling. If you're changing time zones, this is really true. So my tips for doing, getting the best sleep when you're traveling internationally, and I have traveled internationally extensively, uh, is the following. Try to sleep on the plane. I don't sleep well on planes, I just don't, but I do try to get some rest, especially if I'm headed east overnight and I'm gonna be arriving in Europe early in the morning. I do try to at least rest, close my eyes for two to three hours. Even if I can't sleep, it's gonna allow my body just to kind of relax and sort of rejuvenate, if you will, and pre be prepared to hit the ground running for that first day in country. When I do get in the country, I stay awake. The best thing that you can do is try to get on the time, the local time zone of wherever you are even if it's just an hour, if you're in the US and you're driving from East Coast time to Central time, try to keep on that time zone where you're at. So if I'm in Europe, for instance, I am gonna stay awake, I'm gonna force myself to stay awake until it is local bedtime, around 9 p.m., somewhere between 7 to 9 p.m. local time. I will take a nice hot shower, I will cool down my room, do all of the things that I do at home in my hotel room or my Airbnb, I will do those things. And then I tend to take a non-habit forming sleep aid that you can pick up at any drugstore the first two or three nights in country just to help my body sleep for one, but kind of get regulated and that helps me adjust to local time much faster and I will do the same thing on the back end of the trip. Once I am home, I will stay up until it is time for bedtime at home, take a non-habit forming sleep aid one or two nights just to help my body get back into a rhythm and that really, really makes a difference. Having my body well rested means that I can enjoy what I'm doing when I'm sightseeing or out and about either by myself or with the family. It means I have the energy to do that. And it's really helping my immune system, again, stay strong and healthy. So sleep is critical. If I had to give you the two top tips, it would be stay hydrated and stick to your sleep schedule as best you can. Obviously, if you're not changing time zones, this is really easy. But we tend to get a little lax on vacation with our sleep schedule. So. Try as hard as you can to stick to your normal sleep schedule within about an hour. It's going to keep your body regulated. It's going to keep your immune system going nice and healthy, and it's going to help your body fight any potential viruses or bacteria that you might pick up while you're out and about enjoying your vacation. Next up, let's talk snacks. So I always, always, always travel with my own snacks, particularly my Optavia snacks. I never leave home without my Optavia hot chocolate to go in my coffee. I can always get coffee no matter where I am. And in addition to having protein, these also have vitamins and minerals and probiotics, which are essential for gut health and immune health. So I always travel with probably three or four of my Optavia fuelings or snacks, if you want to call them that, per day that I'm going to be gone. I pack two days worth in my carry-on and then I pack the rest in my suitcase and that's totally doable. You don't have to worry about customs or anything like that. The only thing that you want to watch out for if you're traveling internationally is what kind of like if they allow you to bring fruits or meats. So I bought meat sticks for my kiddo to take to Iceland and realized then that I couldn't actually take them into the country. So I always pack my own snacks because I want to make sure that I can have a snack wherever I am on the road and I'm not dependent upon wherever I am and whatever country I'm in to try to find somewhere to stop and eat or find somewhere that actually has a healthy snack available because I really don't want to feed myself a whole bunch of sugar and junk because I know that is really going to ruin my immune system and my ability to stay healthy 
while we're traveling and also once we're home. Speaking of such things, we went to Iceland in October for fall break. I know we're talking spring break, but we went to Iceland for fall break. And it was our first time out of the country since our daughter had been diagnosed with celiac disease. So we were very careful. I researched everything that I possibly could about gluten-free availability in Iceland, what kind of grocery stores there were. And so I knew pretty much what we were gonna run into before we even hit the ground. So one of our carry-on bags between the four of us was this backpack cooler. We actually picked this up on the road in South Dakota a few years ago. But we filled that backpack cooler with our fuelings, gluten-free snacks. Some of the things that we took were this squeezable natural peanut butter. Not my favorite thing for when we're home because it has added sugar and palm oil in it, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure your kid can eat while you're traveling. Um, we took gluten-free crackers and, glu and made sure we had gluten-free trail mix. All of those kinds of things we packed so that we made sure that we had snacks available and food available that she could eat. So we bought gluten-free bread in country and then she was able to spread the peanut butter on the sandwich and make herself a little peanut butter sandwich. So wherever you're going, research ahead of time, make sure that you know what you're running into either if you have food sensitivities or a celiac disease type situation and you can actually pack your snacks. Now, this one we had to pack in our um, checked bags because of the liquid issue. I just really wasn't sure about this. So I just went ahead and packed it in my checked luggage. But anything that's like a protein bar or something packaged like this, you can put that in a carry-on. So if you have availability, I highly recommend taking your own snacks. That way you know what you're getting, you know what you're feeding yourself, and then you're not having to try to find somewhere to stop and get a snack in maybe a situation that you're not entirely familiar with. I'll also add that if you're taking protein powders, um, make sure you take your blender bottle. I almost went off once and left my blender bottle and I had a whole bunch of like shakes and things like that that I was taking with me. And so make sure you have your blender bottle. I also carry a milk frother with me to blend my hot chocolate into my coffee and make myself my little healthy protein mocha, whatever that looks like. If you want to take powdered protein, or I should say protein powder, but it's not individually packaged like in a container like this, if it's something like chocolate that's clearly not a white powder, you, I've researched it and they say that you are okay to like scoop those out into like individual servings into little baggies. If it's something like my amino blend that I drink every day um, for my muscle health, it is a white powder. And so that could look suspicious to security personnel at airports. Um, so my recommendation is this package here, like it's pretty much empty. I might have three or four days worth left in here, but you can take a mostly empty package like this if you don't have the individual servings. And that way it's easily identifiable what it is. There's much, much less suspicious that way. So try that out. Let's talk about dining out while you're on vacation. A lot of the appeal of vacation is getting to try local flavors and new foods and things that you haven't had before. And we all tend to let our inhibitions down around our healthy eating plans while we're on the road. I'm gonna encourage you to do that sparingly because we do still need those healthy foods, those healthy items that are gonna give us our nutrients and our good probiotics and all those things that are gonna keep our gut and our immune health up so that we can, again, enjoy our vacation and not get sick on the back end or hopefully not get sick on the back end. So some tips for eating out. Don't skip breakfast. If you're at an Airbnb type situation or an apartment type situation where you can make your own breakfast, make sure you eat breakfast because again, it's gonna fuel your body for the day, get you going, help you have the energy to get through your day as you're sightseeing and driving around and whatever it is you're doing or playing on the beach, whatever that looks like for you. If you're at a hotel with breakfast included, take advantage of that, especially in Europe I know that like most of those hotel breakfasts include a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits. Stock up on those first before you head for like the carbier options like a bagel or a slice of bread or a croissant or something like that. 
So get those veggies in you because you may not be able to find them later in the day if you're looking for something. Protein as well, stock up on that protein for breakfast. Get as much protein as you can for breakfast before you hit the ground running for the day. Again, it's just gonna fuel you, it's gonna help your gut, it's gonna help your immune system and keep you feeling energized and healthy throughout your vacation. When you do choose to indulge, indulge smartly. Um, I tend to look for things that I can try that I can't get at home. If I can get it at home or I can make it at home, then it's not that special to me. So I look for those special specialty items that you really only can find in that place where you are. So think about that, right? If you're in Italy, I know the pasta and the pizza are amazing there. I've had them, but try something that's really not something that you would find at home in a traditional like Italian restaurant here in the States. Explore those new flavors, do them smart, indulge in them smartly. Maybe split a meal, that's another tip. Split a dish, right? If you come across something that you're really dying to try, either an entree or a dessert or something like that, split it with somebody. That way you get to try that amazing dish that you can't get at home, but you're not eating the whole thing and you're sharing and it's gonna keep those calories counts down. It's gonna keep that sugar intake down, those refined carbs intake down and therefore help keep your immune system healthy. Also, limit beer and alcohol if you can, right? The beer and the alcohol can add up to a lot of liquid calories. It's also going to fight your immune system. It's gonna fight your gut health. So maybe limit those, enjoy again, just like you would like the favorite dessert or the local specialty of the area where you are. Maybe try a glass of a local special wine or a beer of a local special beer but don't make that a regular practice on your vacation. Finally, research your restaurants ahead of time, right? There are so many resources available to us right now out there on the internet. You can totally research your restaurant options, where you're going to be, you can view the menus, use Google Translate if you need to translate from one language to another. You can get an idea of what's available to you, where you might wanna eat, maybe what you wanna avoid, and have a plan going into that. Doesn't always work out, I'm totally aware of that. Traveling is an adventure, um, and you might change your mind once you get there. But if you at least have a plan and you know what restaurant options are available to you, then you kind of know where to steer, what you're looking for. If you wanna have a splurge, go have a splurge. If you want to have something with healthier options that where not everything is deep fried and covered in chocolate, then you're gonna have a plan for that as well. So. When you're eating out on the road, on vacation, overseas, whatever that looks like, know kind of where you need to go, especially if you have food sensitivities. I researched so much when we went to Iceland to make sure that I knew where we could eat that was going to have gluten-free and safe gluten-free options for my daughter. So take that into consideration as well when you're thinking about dining out on vacation. The last thing I wanna hit is physical activity on vacation. Traveling can put so much stress on our bodies and our minds, especially the getting there and the getting back, that physical activity while you're on vacation to me is an absolute must. This doesn't mean you have to go out and run a marathon every morning, but walking, getting out and seeing the sights, choosing to take maybe some stairs instead of an elevator, those kinds of things, get your body moving. Tips. If you're at an airport waiting for your airplane, do laps. Do laps around the terminal, especially traveling internationally. They make you get there so early. There is generally time to do that. Walk before getting on a plane where you might not be able to get up and walk for like four, eight or more hours. So walk, those, walk the terminal while you're waiting for your flight. Stretch, especially on an airplane. Um, there are all kinds of stretches that you can do in your seat. I can throw a link in the description for the one that I use and have enjoyed, but there are lots of resources available there, right? We, our bodies need to move, they need to stretch. So even if you can get up when you go to the bathroom, do a couple of stretches if you're on that, on that flight. If you're traveling by car and you take a restroom break, either at the rest area or a gas station or restaurant, do some stretches there in the parking lot. Nobody's gonna care. Everybody's doing their own thing and nobody's gonna wonder what you're doing. And in fact, they might go, oh, great idea. 
I should stretch. So, stretch. If you're on an airplane, try to stand up every, every hour. You know, go to the bathroom even if you don't necessarily have to go, but just get up out of your seat. That's going to help your body move. That's going to keep things going and, you know, prevent, help prevent things like deep vein th DVTs, the deep vein thromboses. So stand up, get up and move. Same thing if you're in a car. Take those, the, take those short breaks if you're on a road trip. Don't just try to power through for four hours without getting up and moving your body. Once it's your destination, wherever you're going to be, walk, hike, rent a bike, whatever that looks like, whatever kind of physical activity you can build in, that's going to keep your body bodily functions functioning the way that we want them to. It's so good for our overall mental and emotional health as well. So if traveling can be stressful to you, moving your body is going to help counteract that stress. Use If you're at a hotel, use the hotel gym, use the hotel pool. Uh, when I was traveling quite a bit for work overseas, I would always go investigate what the gym situation looked like. And oh, by the way, that's probably where you're going to find the water bottle refiller station is at the hotel gym. Uh, I do this trick all the time, even here in the States. Most gyms will have a water bottle station and I will just go down and fill up my water bottle as many times as I need to because it's free. So use the hotel gyms, use the hotel pool to get your physical activity in, especially if you're on a work trip and you know you're gonna be in meetings all day, try to get up and hit the gym before your work day starts. And plan your activities around things that involve walking or hiking. I love going to the mountains here in North Carolina and we always try to find a fun hike, even if it's a short one, just something to get us out in nature, something out in the sun, something to move our bodies. So that's it. I hope these tips were really helpful to you so that you can stay healthy, keep your immune system strong, so you still enjoy your vacation, but come home feeling amazing and not just kind of destroyed, uh, and hopefully keep prevents you from getting sick on the back end of your vacation. So let me know in the comments if any of these were insightful or you found helpful or you didn't know, and I hope that you have an amazing spring break. See you next time.